Okay, so here we go. Um, this is what I have to show you here, something that I've built in C. Uh, it's for a computer programming assignment here at University of Toronto. Um, it's our first uh, sort of big assignment where we actually have to do an algorithm. And I thought this was pretty cool. So um, for anyone else that has this algorithm in the future or uh, for anyone that's working on a problem like this, uh, maybe you can use this uh, to give you sort of inspiration for coming up with an algorithm. Um, so basically the problem is, um, at its core, it's a maze. And the program, or the, the teacher will give you like an input file. Uh, it has a maze of um, consisting of like a path that you can take and walls. There's a start and a finish, and you just have to find a path, any path, from the start to the finish. It doesn't have to be the shortest. It doesn't have to be the fastest. It just has to be a path. Um, as it turns out, the algorithm that I ended up making is always the shortest. Uh, it's not the fastest, but uh, it's the shortest route to get there. Um, and it's pretty cool. So I'll show you quickly uh, basically what the, the program consists of. So starting off here with the text files, the input is going to look something like this. Now this one is quite big. Uh, this map is 45 by 45 uh, units. So you can see here uh, the dots, each of those are areas that you can traverse. The hash marks are, um, they mean that it's a wall, you can't go through it. And you'll be able to see there's one L in there somewhere and one X, and you want to get from the L to the X. And it looks pretty complicated, and really, um, as a human, we when we solve it, we think about it, uh, we try something and then get to a dead end, and in without even really having to think about it, we'd backtrack to the junction, keep going. Um, and in this case, a computer, even though you think, oh, it's a computer, it can think. No, you have to try and come up with an algorithm that would mimic the human brain. Um, now, this maze like this would be easy to do with recursion. If you've done programming before, uh, recursion is a pretty standard sort of programming technique. Um, but for this assignment, it was specifically said no recursion. It actually makes it a little bit more interesting. Um, so I'll start off, I'll just look at one of the, like an easier map. Uh, let's look at map four. So this one here, it's a straight, um, it's an L in one corner, an X in the other corner, and then there's dots in between. So basically, you just have to go from one corner to another. Mm -hmm. And it's not too difficult to do. Um, the program code itself here, I'll show you the program first, I'll show you exactly what it does. So this one is map4.txt, and there we go. So, scroll right to the top here, this is what our map looks like to begin with. It reads in the map, um, it finds the, the end, it finds the, uh, the target and the destination, and then it starts off by with a blank slate, um, setting zero as the starting position. And now this is the kind of neat part about the algorithm is that each time it goes through recursively, um, like each move that it has in a loop, you'll see it starts with zero, just zero, and then adds the ones on and adds twos and adds threes. And eventually the numbers sort of span out from zero, always getting bigger each time until As you can see here with the 23, that's when it actually has found the far corner, it found the L. As you remember, the L was in the top right corner. So right here, it's gone up and it said, okay, now 23 is where, um, is where the target is. And what it does is then it counts backwards, basically. It goes, okay, 23, 22, 21, and it goes all the way back down to 4 and then down to 0. Or it might go down to 19, then to 0 or it might even go sort of like a zigzag. It can go either way. It's always going to be the exact same path length. And because it's they're each sort of 23 steps away from the beginning, so it's always going to be able to find it. If there is a solution, this is guaranteed to find it because it'll put a number anywhere um, that the program can sort of branch out to, and then it can always just follow the numbers back. Uh, so it's almost kind of thinking a little bit recursively. Um, Let's start with a little bit more of a complex example here. And the, the diagram of the console looks a little bit messed up when we do that. But map 14. Gee, I think there are a couple of the maps that they gave us here that actually don't have a solution, and this might be one of them. 
So I'll, I'll just do 16 because I know that one should have it. So map 16. We'll send it through the input stream. Bam. So west, west, north, west, north, west, west, north, north, north. It's a lot to it, right? But, and yeah, as I said, the input looks messed up because it's such a big file. Um, but let's go. Actually, this is kind of a neat thing to see. This is iteratively, like each recursion, each time it goes through the loop, I get just a print what it's got. So here you can see starting out, the L is uh, right about where it should be inside of the, in the text file there. The first one, it branches out up, down to the left. You can see in the, in the source file here, there's a space up above, down to the left. And the next one, bam, it goes out two. So off of the ones, it goes out to all the other places it can go. And then off of the twos, come the threes. You can see like a tree branch almost, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger each time. And bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Until eventually at the end here, after it's spanned through this whole maze, because it's quite complex and it has to go into every nook and cranny until it finds the the endpoint. And then once it finds it, it says, okay, now the endpoint's now at number 37. I'm going to count back 38, 36, 35. And it does that, and as it goes, it prints uh, west, north, east, or south, depending on what it came up with. Um, the source code itself, I'm going to put that up on my website so you can download it, take a look at it if you have sort of a similar problem. Um, so as I said again, there's no recursion used at all in this, which is pretty big because usually like the sort of the standard de facto Google search for maze solving algorithms uh, would be using, um, using recursive techniques. Also, um, unlike other techniques there are on YouTube right now, there are sort of maze solving techniques, assuming that the start is at one wall, the end is on another wall, you can always just follow like the left wall. That works great, but in a situation like this where there are walls suspended and the targets aren't at the edges, that does not work. So, um, for what it's worth, this is sort of the algorithm that I came up with. Uh, feel free to use it if you want. Obviously, you don't. Um, don't copy it directly because you don't learn anything from that. But if you're looking for inspiration, it took me a while to sort of come up with this. Um, and I'm not saying it's the best algorithm, but it's sort of a neat one and it works pretty well. And if anything, I think it's pretty cool just to see sort of how the uh, program can branch out and sort of think for itself. Anyway, um, I think that's all for now. I'll try and post more videos so as I go through this programming course and through engineering science. Because uh, it's a pretty, uh, so far it's been a pretty rigorous program. And uh, it's going to be sort of almost like my, my video log, vlog of my ongoing process, progress rather. Um, as well, I can sort of share stuff because I think this is pretty useful. Anyway, uh, I think that's all. So, thanks.